Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a whip and chat for you, just like I have been doing previous till now. I have been working on Mountain Castle in my other two or three whip and chats. And in this uh, whip and chat, you'll notice that the painting is different. And what you see here is Catching Dreams by Chuck Pinson. Now you will have to look at the thumbnail if you would like to know what this painting is and what it looks like. And I will link the painting in the description below if you're interested in, in getting it. I've done an unboxing for this painting and I've also done a kitting up video for this painting and I will be doing a post review. So you'll be seeing a little bit more about this painting. Now Mountain Castle is about... 55% done and I only put it to the side so that I can work on this for the check along event and that is by Mindy's Diamond Paintings. Uh, she's the uh, hosting it or the uh, organizer. It's also being sponsored by Diamond Art Club and I think there is a third person that is uh, contributing towards this event and the, this uh, Chuck Along 3 is for Chuck Pinson paintings only by Diamond Art Club, not by any other, I mean, not by Dreamer Designs. That's the only other licensed company that uh, licensed Chuck Pinson's work. So these are for Diamond Art Club Chuck Pinson Diamond paintings. Now, this painting, I start, this, the, the event runs from March 1st to March 31st, and I have, you know, 31 days like everyone else to accomplish uh, completing this painting. And actually to participate in the event, you don't even have to finish. You just have to participate to a certain degree. But I have a feeling that unless fatigue overtakes me in the next hour or two, this painting could very well be done. And I do want to tell you something that I've been doing this by s sections with... Um, this parchment paper here, whoops, I'm almost dropping my cell phone, let me grab this. With this uh, parchment paper here, Zazasu, and I usually work in sections, but since this is the last part of my painting, I opened up both squares, and I'm just going to try to wipe it out this way. Um, and so, as I mentioned, um, the... I did a, some whipping chats in February, and now we are going into, not quite, we're ending the second week of February, excuse me, we're ending the second week of March, so this is going to be kind of like a brief discussion about what I read. I won't detail all of the books that I read like I did in my other whipping chats because I think I'm going to do a mid-month video on this channel but I don't know we'll see let's take a look at what I've read and where I left off now according to my uh, spreadsheet the last book we talked about on this channel as far as a whipping chat is concerned is ice creams at Emerald Grove by Holly Martin and that took me till March 20 excuse me February 21st now, I got a really, really bad migraine at the end of February. So between the 21st and the 28th, I only read three more books. I did start Sacagawea. Actually, it looks like I started it on February 18th, and I finished it on March 1st. But my reading really dropped down to just a few books at the end of the month because of a six-day migraine. It took days for that headache to go away. So the last three books that I read in February were Are We There Yet by Kathleen West. And that's basically about uh, three sets of parents with three preteen children, age 12. I think they were seventh graders and the troubles that they were having in school. And one of the parents also had, I think the daughter was about eight or nine years old and she had reading difficulties. Whereas the children, the, the preteens, had behavioral difficulties. And the book touched on some serious subjects, and it does release on March 16th. So when the book is released, um, I, my, the review will go live on my blog and also this channel. 
And that's basically all I'm going to say about Are We There Yet. I gave it four stars. And it looks like I've got to correct Goodreads because Goodreads has me down for five stars. Um, I mean, I put five stars down incorrectly. The next book I read was Danger in Numbers by Kathleen West. And that was really a good book because it touched on a religious cult that was hidden deep in the Everglades. And there was a ritualistic murder that took place. And uh, two detectives, well, actually it was a Florida federal agent and an FBI federal agent paired together to try to solve the murder that happened and other situations that tied into that and in do in so doing it was hunting the existence of a cult to stop any other murders from taking place and that was a really good book i love heather graham i gave that one five stars easy easy peasy and that book let's see we're going to i'm going to change something on on goodreads really quickly so i can tell you when that one comes out give me one moment please I don't quite think that one is out yet. Are we there yet? Oh, we don't have the release date focused. Just want to let you know because I think it's a great read. Excuse me, not are we there yet? Danger in Numbers. I'm sorry. That comes out March 23rd, so in, in about 10 days. And I'll you'll see a review for this on my blog when uh, when the book goes live for the public to buy then the next book i read was her dark lies by jt ellison and i'll tell you briefly about jt ellison co-authors the Brittany fbi series with katherine coulter i love that series i'm up to date with it waiting eagerly for the next book in the series and that's how i learned about jt ellison so once I became a reviewer for NetGalley, I started getting other books by her, and every book I've read by her thus far has been a five-star book. So this book here, Her Dark Lies, was basically about a woman who was about to marry into a wealthy family, and um, it was going to be a very small event actually they had their reception before the wedding where they lived i think in california and then they flew off to italy for the wedding but this book it did not things did not go as planned and the whole book has a gothic feel to it it's kind of like a gothic mystery and it a bunch of things started to happen and if you read or watch my review of this book which like Let's see. This okay. This one already came out. This came out March 9th. Uh, you'll see that it reminds you of other books, maybe Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, or um, let's see, oh, a couple other books. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm just trying to think. The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins, or even oh, there's one more. Oh, uh, The Wife Between Us by. Greer Hendrickson, Sarah Pekinen. I, I wanted to think of that third one because I didn't put that in my blog, but that book keeps coming to mind. So it was a really good book. Uh, I, like I said, anything by Heather Graham, pretty much, excuse me, by J.T. Ellison, I will give five stars to because she hasn't gone wrong yet when it comes to a book that is in, that it has a mystery, that is a mystery read. Now the next book, I read because we're going to segue into March. Now, I started on February 18th, Sacagawea by Anna Lee Waldo, thanks to the recommendation of one of the diamond painters I follow, and her channel is Nana of Seven Crafts. And she loves this book, and she had read it over two dozen times. And that, to me, is a very, very high recommendation. So I started Sacagawea, but my goal for reading it, since it was 1,494 pages, was uh, 200 pages a day until I finished it. So every time I read a portion of the book, I would go read one or two or sometimes three other books, and then I would go back and read another couple hundred pages. 
And there was no problem at all following the story, reading it in this fashion, because it's just something that reminds me of, say, if you watch five, six, seven, eight television series over the course of a television season, you don't mix up your characters, your scenarios, your plots, your conflicts. You remember all of that, and that's how it was with Sacagawea. And who was Sacagawea? She was an Indian explorer, actually, who worked alongside with Lewis and Clark because they wanted her to translate. She spoke the in, the language of her tribe, but she was very knowledgeable about other languages. And she also was very effective in using hand signs. And she went on an expedition with them. And she wasn't alone, obviously. And as a matter of fact, her husband, who was many years her senior, and her young son, whose nickname was Bap, also were uh, were with her. So they did this expedition, and that's where she got her start as far as being a character in the story. But the thing about Sacagawea is she was a part of history, and it was a very, very, very good story. I have looked Sacagawea up. I Googled her, and I found out lots of things about her. And I love that the author used countless, countless references in the book to be as true to history as she could possibly be. And it was a really good read. I haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to do a formal review for my blog or my channel, but I may, but because it wasn't a review title, it was just something that I wanted to read. Now, along the line of something that I wanted to read, I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. So that was Sacagawea, and it was a really good read. I highly recommend it. You can get it probably from your library, but I bought the Kindle book of it because when I know a book is going to be a keeper, I will buy a copy of it, either by Kindle or audio if it's available. So you can get it definitely on Kindle. You can probably get it in print as well. And then as I started my first read in February, in March, I started with a quick novella and it was just 84 pages and it was the intern which was part of the Orphan X series. So the next group of books I'm not going to talk about specifically because the, the next group that I'm going to mention here, you're going to find reviews for these on this channel and on in my blog, is I read five books in the Orphan X series consecutively, and that was The Intern, Out of the Dark, into the Fire, The List, and Prodigal Son, all by Greg Horowitz, all part of the Orphan X series. I love the series. Most of the books got four stars. I think two of, of them I gave five stars to. And again, you can find that review here on this channel. Now, in the midst of reading the Greg Hurwitz series, I started another tome. And basically, a tome is a lengthy volume. And that was War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. Now, I happened upon a Facebook post, or it might have been a Facebook Messenger post in one of my reading groups, that there was going to be a group read for this book. And to be quite honest with you, I don't read a lot of large books. I mean, I have read many, many books over 500 pages, but something over a thousand pages that's just not something that I take the time to do but since I read Sacagawea on my own at 200 pages a day when I found out that they were going to be reading War and Peace at only 50 pages a day for the month of March it was an easy yes so I joined that group and we're reading War and Peace and it's translated from Russian because it's a Russian book and I got it on Audible, and you can get it two, at least two ways on Audible, and there might even be more. Um, one way is it's included in your Audible membership, and it's, I think, 61 hours, because it's a 1,300-page book. But I wasn't having any trouble with the narrator, because really, at only 50 pages a day, it, it would have been very easy for me to 
assimilate, but the ladies in the group were saying that there was a better narrator. And but to you to get to the better narrator, I had to use two of my Audible credits. So should you be interested in trying it, and you do have Audible, you do have choices as to how you would like to listen to it. After listening to a preview of the paid version of it, I went with the paid version. And I'm really glad I did because the more I get into War and Peace, and I think I'm 55% done, I, I think I'm on page maybe 600 and I can tell you in one minute, I want to tell you. I am on page 560. Um, the more I get into it every morning when I listen to my 50 pages, the more I enjoy the narrator. He has to do a lot of voices because the author uses tons and tons and tons of characters in this book. So it's a really good read and listening to it while on, on, in sections and then discussing it with the group of readers in Facebook Messenger is a great way for me to enjoy another tome. And we're already discussing the next one and I hope that it's Anna Karen. Karen Anena? Nope. I knew I was going to mess up her name, but the Tolstoy also wrote that one. And uh, there's a couple other books, but no doubt I'm going to join in whatever book we end up deciding on, even if it's not one that I myself would have chosen. So, as I mentioned, I read the Greg Hurwitz books all in a row, but every day I'm reading War and Peace. And then I went from the Greg Hurwitz series into the... Um, Deanna Rayburn series, and when I read that one, and, and the main character is Veronica Speedwell, and her sidekick per se is called Stoker, and his full name is Stoker Templeton Vane, but it, Stoker even kids her and says, what am I, your sidekick? So it's kind of funny that he asked her that in one of the books. But um, that was a great series. There were six books in the series, and that review is also here on this channel. And the thing about um, that book is she finds out her, her true parentage. I paused because I wanted to use the right terminology. She discovers her true parentage, and it is due to her parentage that she is faced with danger, and a mystery ensues, and they start trying to get to the root cause of what was going on with her, and it became adventure after adventure. She's a butterfly hunter, he's a natural historian, and they start off like oil and water, but we know right away that there's a connection between them and it becomes much more than that and the reason I got this book is because I read this whole series is because I got this sixth book in the series from NetGalley for review and anybody that is getting to know, knows me or is getting to know me will know this one fact if I get book six in a series I will most likely 98% of the time go everywhere online Hoopla Overdrive, Libby, uh, Scribd, Audible, Kindle, you name it. Find all of the other books in the series. Read and review all of them until I get to the review title. That's just, it might end up being my, it's just something I do. I'm very invested in my books. So because I found this book on NetGalley and discovered it had five previous titles, you got it, I read all five. This review is on the blog, it's here on the channel, and I loved it, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Then, um, one thing I mentioned, I might have mentioned this earlier this month, is I do a lot of challenges in um, my everyday reading, and one of the challenges I usually do every month, although I do skip months from time to time, is the reading rivalry challenge. And so when you're reading in these challenges, they have something that's called prompts or criteria. And it's the prompts that I go to my existing TBR and try to match up titles that will 
fit whatever the individual challenge is. Now I'm also doing LFC, which is Literary Fight Club, and TBD, which is the book Democracy. And then, by the way, the War and Peace is, uh, um, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I got to check, A Court of Books and Readers. So I, I do a bunch of challenges. So in the Reading Rivalry Challenge, we needed a book that was the same name of a song. So I asked in the chat and they said, Peter Pan. And I said, Peter Pan's the name of a song. So somebody gave me the link and indeed it is. So I found out that a an all, an all cast narration of Peter Pan is included in my Audible membership. So guess what? I read a child's book, a middle grade book called Peter Pan. J.M. Barry is the author. I've read it as a child. I read it as a preteen. I've read it as an adult, but I reread it for the sake of the challenge. Then after that, I read The Princess Diaries by Med Cabot. Again, the, one of the prompts for reading rivalry was a book written, not reading library, I think this might have been in the book Democracy. One of the challenges, uh, the prompt was a book written in an unusual format. And so a diary is an unusual form. I don't know why I'm single placing, but hey, that's what I'm doing. Um, the Princess Diaries is written in diary format, so I read it for that, and it was uh, narrated by, oh my gosh, who is the actress? Oh my goodness, I can't remember. Anne Hathaway. Um, she narrated it, and I think she was the perfect narrator for the book. I think there's four or five books, might be five, and I think when I do a little catch up on my blog, I will probably go and grab all the other books in the series. I loved it. And I loved the movies as well. And then I read um, two books by um, Rebecca Weatherspoon. Um, one I have for review from last year. And it was the second book in the series. So quite naturally, true to form, I went and got the first one. So the, the first book by Rebecca Weatherspoon I read was um, A Cowboy to Remember. And then the one for review was um, If the Boot Fits. And they were both contemporary romances. Uh, Rebecca Weatherspoon is African American, so her characters are also African American. And in one case, uh, well, basically, you obviously it's a romance I'm, I'm a little short for a quick way to uh, describe the book but you had a woman who got injured and the cause of her injury was a mystery at first but the biggest problem was not how she got hurt but the fact that she got amnesia she had amnesia and her best friend was notified and was there for her, and I think another friend came in as well, but they couldn't, like, reach her as far as making her feel safe, secure, or whatever, so either the nurse or one of the friends found this guy's number in her contact, so it had to be the hospital. So they contacted this guy, and his name, by the way, I should tell you his name, shouldn't I? Her name was Evie Buchanan. She, was, she, she did a morning show, like a cooking show on television but his name was Zach and um Zach Pleasant and we're gonna there's gonna be more books in the series but in any event um he's he's her emergency contact so he comes but he comes with something that he doesn't quite want her to know is they broke up under bad terms they were high school sweethearts hadn't seen each other in I think six years and now all of a sudden she has amnesia and remember i said that they weren't with they weren't at first too concerned about why she got hurt but then as they learned about the way she got hurt she kind of went with zach to his family's ranch so that she could be safe until they got they figured out who caused her harm and so that is how that love story went 
and it was really cute i'm glad i read it even though it wasn't a review title it just happened to be the next book in the series and then the next one i read was if the boot fits which is book two in the series and this one was about zach's cousin who um was the main protagonist in his love story and I loved it and I think as far as I can tell it looks like it might be a trilogy um, even though there are other uh, pleasant men uh, brothers cousins so it might even be a longer series and and if the boot fits it is only book two so I'm not sure what else is in store but Rebecca Weatherspoon is new to me so I'm glad I read it and as far as those prompts and, and criteria I mentioned, yes, it fit a prompt for a BIPOC character. So um, I was glad I had a chance to read that. And I'm catching up. I'm almost done. Is um, These two books, and actually I can show you these two because they're right here. I'll put my drills down for a minute. Um, these two books, um, I already read this one. I read this this morning. And I'm... Um, uh, about um, about yeah I'm on chapter eight you see how the book actually opened to it um so I'm halfway through it and these are pretty lengthy books one was almost 400 pages this is like 380 pages so these books are really good they're romantic suspense and the first book has uh the first book has Reese Weatherspoon he's the male protagonist in this one and this one has Rowan nope I'm saying it backwards. Let me see. Yes, Reese is the character in this one. Rowan is the character in this one. They are twin brothers. Uh, Rowan is 17 minutes older than Reese. And they both are in situations where either they or their significant other, the one that they meet in the book, are facing problems. And that's why it's a romantic suspense. Really good series. These are both reissues, by the way. Um, this was previously published, I think, three or four years ago as Watching You. And this was previously published as Wanting You. So if you're looking for these books, like in your library, look up Leslie. And, and she added the A to her name because when I used to read her, she was just known as Leslie Kelly. But if you're looking for these books, um, whether on Amazon um, look under both titles. Again, I'll say it one more time. I'll be watching you, which was watching you, and Nowhere to Hide, which was wanting you. And it is a trilogy, and the, I want to tell you the third book, and I'm so tempted to read it now, and I think I probably will, but no, Forever won't be releasing it in, for a few months yet, but the third book, which whatever it is, and I, sh I did read the name of it earlier, was released in 2019, so I'll probably go ahead and get that third book and read it, but I won't review the third book on my blog until I get the print arc from the company. And yes, these were print arcs. So, that's all I've read up until now. And let me tell you, uh, I can show you one of the books that I will be starting tomorrow, or maybe tonight if I finish Nowhere to Hide, and that's The Maidens by um, Alex Michaelides. Let's raise this a little bit. Um, Alex Michaelides, this is his sophomore book. His first book, his uh, debut novel was The Silent Patient, and this is a print arc. Um, it will be a hard cover, but sometimes when I get print arcs, they come in this format. And this will be released on June 15th, so that's coming up. And the last thing I'll do, I'll grab my drills and try to put in a couple of drills while I finish talking, is tell you a little bit about my year so far. I am pleased to say that I am reading book number 102 for the year. Uh, what drills am I even using? Okay, the red arrow. Um, I am reading book number 102 for the year. My Goodreads goal is 500. So I have passed the 100 mark. Um, I've only read 100 books thus far because one of the books is War and Peace, which I am scheduled to read through March 30th. 
and then I'm also reading nowhere to hide so my completion is 100 but I'm on 102 and it's been a good month um, as far as page numbers and I will give you that a page count like in January, I read 10,550 pages, and in February, I read 13,010 pages, but already here, on as of March 13th, I've read 8,224 pages. So my page count is going to be extremely high for March, and I'm really happy about that. I read 39 books in, um, I read 39 books Sorry, my spreadsheet's acting up. I don't know why it won't let me click out of this. I read 39 books in January. And then in February, I think I read 40. Yes, I read 40. And now I am on book number 23. So I should hopefully pass what I read in February. But if I do, I do. And if I don't, I, I've, I've had a great month so far. And uh, in addition to that, in all the challenges that I mentioned, I've already mentioned them. Uh, this weekend is the Shadow Lounge Monthly Readathon. It's it happens every second week of the month, and in that readathon, you don't have prompts or anything. You just read as much as you can within a 24 to 48 hour period depending on the length of the challenge. And I've read, had challenges like this that are 72 hours, but I think this one is 48. It just depends on what month that, that we're in as far as how that challenge works. Um, in addition to that, I have upcoming videos that you're going to see on the blog. Uh, in up, I mean, upcoming videos you're going to see on this channel that have already been filmed days in advance, sometimes weeks in advance. And those videos will post depending on release date. And I think that's about it. Maybe I will tell you that I am also doing a lot of blog tours. So those reviews will all go up as scheduled. And I'm just enjoying my reading. And, and I will say that if you watch this video, if you have any lengthy historically based books or boring books that you would recommend like Anna Karenina I think I said it right or uh, Sacagawea books along that line like for example Gone with the Wind I'm thinking about reading that oh another classic I am reading this month I am reading Little Women I'm starting that one tomorrow I'm rereading it I've already read it countless times it's my favorite book of all time um so if you can think of any classics you want to recommend, I'm all ears. And what else did I want to ask you uh, besides classics? I don't know. Uh, oh, Agatha Christie books. What is your favorite Agatha Christie book? That's what I wanted to ask you if you like mysteries. And then I will mention one other, one other thing. It is March Mystery Madness. And admittedly, I have not read... I've only read maybe one of my March Mystery Madness reads, and um, that's, I believe, Lizzie Faye Loves Books is hosting that, and uh, yes, Lizzie Le Faye Loves Books, and I have uh, nine, uh, ten books picked up, I, well, I guess I have nine, eight categories and one bonus. And it looks like I have read three of those so far. I've read All for One by Melissa. Oh, I did mention All for One by Melissa. I left out an entire series. So we're going to stop for a minute. And we're going to... I cannot edit this video because I haven't learned to edit on my computer yet. I read three books by Melissa De La Cruz. I feel terrible for not mentioning those. So we're going to talk about that for a minute. And I'll go back to March Mystery Madness. Please forgive me. Those three books are... Alex and Eliza, Love and War, and All for One by Melissa De La Cruz. Now, these books are all based on Alexander Hamilton, who was our nation's, one of our nation's founding fathers. Melissa De La Cruz is a young adult author, so these books are written for a young adult audience. But I think they were great fiction. They were fictional books based on real history. 
And the first book, of course, is how they meet. The second book is shortly after they marry and he goes off to war. I think he goes, no, I'm, I might be mixing up books. In the third book, yes, he goes off to war. And then the third, okay, I'm sorry. Let me slow down. I'm a little upset with myself for not mentioning this earlier as far as in the right order. Yes, he goes off to war because he's serving under uh, George Washington. And then in the third book, he comes back home and he tries to make his family in his business. He goes to law school. He gets his law degree. He opens up his own law business, small as it was. But he was not a perfect man. As a matter of fact, um, he was often described as a man who got too close to the sun. He took risks, whether it was in war, in business, in life, and in love. He, he was not a perfect man, and that was a little hurtful for me because they really, really, really were in love. And then, because of breeding rivalry, one of the bonuses for that is to watch the movie Hamilton, which I had absolutely no interest in. But I watched it and smiled and cried and laughed. I loved that movie. It's a musical. 99.8% of it is all music. I think they speak like twice in it. And that was my exposure to learning about Alexander Hamilton for the first time since I was in like eighth grade. So Alex and Eliza, Love and War and All for One, I got them all at my library as audiobooks. I highly recommend you get them. I think they were very, very enjoyable reads. And I do truly apologize for saying all that out of order. And the reason I, I jumped into that is because with going back to the March Mystery Madness, I did read um, number is one of the prompts, and that would be all for one. For March Mystery Madness, another uh, prompt is person, so I chose Prodigal Son, which was Greg Hurwitz. And for bonus, I chose A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayburn. So I still have six books to read for March Mystery Madness, but I have until the end, end of March. The books I will be reading for that will be Serpentine by Jonathan Kellerman, Mystery at the Abbey Hotel by Claire Chase, Arctic Storm Rising. I put Arc Arctic Storm Rising, but I think I'm going to read No Exit by Taylor Hankins or Taylor Reed. I think I'm going to change that to um, No Exit, whether I, I'm almost sure I'm going to change. And then Color, I chose The Black Order by Jeff Rovin. Time, I chose Three Missing Days by Colleen Coble. I read the first two already. In Space, I, I chose The Last Place You Look by Louisa Scar. So that's pretty much... Oh, I, I barely diamond paint when I'm talking, right? I'm sorry. Look at that. I had the drills. I set them down perfectly. I don't know why I just didn't do that. So that's it. I hope that you stayed with me this whole time, especially since I so sillily left out um, the Alex and Eliza series. And I'm going to do a review on that one pretty soon. So that's it. That's my March for you, my mid-March. And it's really not truly mid-March, but it's my whip and chat because my mid-March video will be a just a video with me facing the camera talking more about the books. So that's it, everybody. I will see you next time. Thanks for your time and your attention. Don't forget, give me those recommendations for the bigger reads and whatever your favorite Agatha Christie book might be. Of course, I should tell you mine, right? Murder on the Orient Express, which I think I might reread soon. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.